is so hot. I'll just soak it up from the house, put a bit of B-roll on on the first bit. And it's only like 10 minutes, if that, it's probably less than 10 minutes and the views are awesome over to Snowdon and just the mountains in general. Uh, it's like not many clouds in the sky. I am dripping though, not from that, it's from the push up. You can't see the path, but it's like down there somewhere. This is like a part of Lion Rock. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm out of breath. Yes, part of Lion Rock doesn't get used very often um, compared to the main crag. Partly because um, not so many people know about it. It's not like it's a secret, but it's one of those things that locals will know about, other people probably won't. There's a topo on my, um, on my website. Uh, JB Mountain Skills, have a, have a search for it, you'll find it. Just under Lion Rock, so the topo's got Lion Rock. Uh, what's the other bit? Uh, pine Tree Wall. It's been so long since I've been here, I can't remember the names. Pine Tree Wall, and then this is Spotty Walls. And then you can't see through the trees, but Union Rock is just the other side of the lake. Sorry, looking at that. I keep looking at the wrong bit of the camera. I look where the stop button is instead of where the actual uh, camera is. Oh, it's a bit weird doing this uh, selfie stuff. Uh, but this bit, it's a bit, uh, you can see behind me uh, there, a bit steeper than the main part of um, Lion Rock, but loads quieter. Right? I very, very rarely see people here. I use it for uh, like RCI courses and stuff like that because it's quite handy. Um, setups are, are okay at the top a little bit tricky um worth having a look first if you're working here or something come and have a look at it first uh, just to get the low down of it um but the views i'll get back on the camera i've got to scramble up to the top now leaving the bike down here just lent down there because uh, i can't uh, drag it up there i'm too knackered uh, i'll show you the view from up there it's absolutely amazing uh, and maybe i'll have stopped dripping with sweat by the time i get up there Okay, well there you go, I've made it up to the top of Spotty Walls. You could see on that bit of B-roll if I included it, if it looked half good or not. It's a bit of a scramble, it's not difficult. You hardly need to use your hands, but I couldn't drag the, back, the bike up here. I'd have been even sweatier than I am now. Flipping roasting today. I've been bouldering today and I don't know if you'll see that. I've got these little flipping cuts on my hands, so I didn't get the problem done that I wanted to get done. I was really a bit disappointed with that because it should have gone down today, but literally ripping my skin off on the holds. So at the top of Spotty Walls, um, I'll pan round in a minute probably so you can see Union Rock just over there, another quality little crag for beginners and stuff. Uh, just over that side, Pine Tree Wall, and then again to the main part of, um, of Lion Rock itself. Spotty Walls is ace. I've never seen anyone else up here. Um, other people use it, for sure I did, but when I've come to use it, I've never seen anyone up here. It's, it's a good one to know about. It's not in any proper guidebook. So as I said down there, it's on my website. So have a hunt for that. JV Mountain Skills, type in Lion Rock Topo. It should come up. Um, and if you are going to use it, it's worth coming up. Uh, I guess any crag. It's worth coming to before you actually plan to use it to have a little look around. The setups on this bit, little bit trickier than some crags. They're not desperate by any stretch, but a bit more thought required. The gear's really good. There's some trees, some boulders, and there's some nuts and stuff. But the setup wall is kind of at a funny angle compared to the actual climbing wall. So you've got to take ABC, anchor, B layer, climber, all in a straight line, that side to side and up and down. You've got to take that into account when you're setting these things up. Otherwise, you can have a really good setup when it's weighted, it will go moves to the side and suddenly it's not equalized and stuff like that. So it is worth having a little look around, which is why I use it on RCI assessments, not to catch people out, but to make sure people are thinking about the whole package, right? Um, if you are doing your RCI and stuff, it is worth getting to know the crags a little bit if you can. If you're gonna pass your RCI, you can pass anywhere, but why not make life a bit easier by having a hunt around? Um, today's video, after all that flipping waffle, is gonna be about whether we can use uh, wire gates, snap gates on belays. If you don't wanna watch the rest of the video, the answer is yes, you can. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and all that. But there are some caveats, so it is worth watching. Um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, I'll go and set that up and then we'll, we'll have a look through it and chat about the pros and cons and all that kind of jazz. Right, we're gonna imagine that I've climbed up a pitch now. I've got some of my belay, I've placed some kit. I'm still on belay and all that jazz down the bottom. I've placed a few bits, but I'm probably gonna use that piece and that piece, number 10 offset, uh, number seven offset, pretty sinkers. Um, and they're pretty close together. So I'm gonna use a sling to set up because by default I like to, right? Let's clip into uh, that one, spinning around, get that join out of the way. 
and then because we're on wire gate questioning mode I'm going to clip a wire gate into there spinning around do my little overhand to equalize it and all that kind of thing uh, get myself a screw gate okay and clip myself into that do him up one-handed clove it's been watching those videos uh, it's all nice and quick quite happy with that it's rubbing over an edge a bit and it looks like it wants to sort of fling up so I'm just going to move that to there so we've got a belay can I shout down safe at this point well let's have a quick analyze of that the gold one that carabiner is in space the belay is always under tension tight is right when it comes to belays you don't want slack in it because that puts shock if my mate falls off also means I'm moving around so maybe I bang my hands and let go of the belay device or something but that's in space there's no way that that can unclip itself or even have the gate open and weaken the carabiner not going to happen oh you can see that moving right on cue there are you happy about using a snap gate there I'm not no because it's on an edge it is not in space so I've used a snap gate Let's say I've run out of screw gate because I've forgotten them or I've dropped them or I've left them on the last belay, whatever it might be. What else have I got? Well, I've got some quick draws on me here. So let's take one of those apart, use a spare snapper there. And I'm gonna put that the opposite way to that one. So I'm gonna clip it in to the same wire and everything. Clip him in, he says fiddling around and spinning around. So hopefully you can see, it's fighting back a bit, isn't it? But you can see there, they're opposed like that, all right? So it's still gonna sit in the same place. Nothing's changed about the positioning of it or anything. It's just changed that there's now two snap gates on there. For me, two snap gates like that are as good as a screw gate. So I am perfectly happy with that. I'd rather it wasn't on an edge like, but it is, and that's just the way it goes. That's a simple solution if you haven't got a screw gate. What would you rather do? What would I rather do? I'd rather have a screw gate on it from the start, to be honest, but that is just as safe. So I've now got that point taken care of, that point taken care of, and I'm clove hitched in. Could you clove hitch in to a snap gate? Well, of course you could do it, but would you want to do it? Personally, no. This is like a single point of failure, right? If this for any reason exploded, well, we've got the redundancy in the system, haven't we, from the other piece. If this unclipped itself somehow, I'm not attached to anything anymore. So any single points like that, I don't want them to be snap gates. Could you oppose two snap gates? Yes, you could, because I've said that's as good as a screw gate. I'd rather use a screw gate because it kind of just seems more efficient and uh, sort of the right thing to do. In this setup, I've only used one screw gate. I've said in other videos, I carry four, so I could easily have had a screw gate involved there. What about if I want to uh, go into guide mode? Let's put that into that loop. The whole video that I've done, well, more than one probably on where you can clip that, etc. Uh, let's just do it into there for now. Screw gate, screw gate. They have to be screw gates because they're single points of failure, aren't they? Aren't they? Sorry. So if I put this on belay now, right? How many screw gates have I used here? One, two, three. So I'd still have one spare. So maybe that could have gone up there. But I haven't got a fifth one. So this would have to be a snap gate with my setup, right? Could you carry more screw gates? Of course you could. Do I? No, because I'm happy to make these decisions. Have I ever fallen or failed on a route because I've carried too much on my harness? Probably not, right? Is it nicer to climb with a nice light rack on your harness? Yeah, absolutely it is. Is it a nice psychological boost? Yeah, absolutely it is. So I'm not gonna change what I carry. Obviously you could, but we've just got to develop good decision making and decide where we can safely place snap gates, all right? One thing you can do, I see people doing sometimes, is clove hitching the sling into the snap gate. That's even less likely to unclip. Do I feel the need to do that? Not particularly, right? Other situations where I might not use a snap gate, if it's kind of out of sight, I'm not really keen on sort of not knowing what's happening to something, so I want fully belt and braces if it's over a lip and out of sight, so I'd go for a screw gate there. But this is a cool setup now, I reckon. Let's swap this into one more setup using the rope and have a look at a couple of things there. Use the rope this time, nothing else has changed. Still got the two snap gates up there, opposed, still got the single snap gate there, all working. Would you want this one to be a uh, snap gate? No, not really, personally, because 
it's kind of a single point of failure, although there's two things on it. it for, to me, that counts as a single point of failure. And what's the other reason? Well, I'm going to belay off here in a minute, and there's loads of movement going on. So it'd be really easy to knock that snap gate. I'm laughing because that jet going over. Definitely more noise when I do these videos outside, but it's so nice to be out of flipping love it. Uh, so yeah, to, we said we're not going to use a snap gate there because there's loads of movement going on. Don't like it. One other thing to show you that I don't particularly like, right, is people defaulting to using a quick draw on the belay. So what I mean by that is clipping it like that. So that's going to mess up my equalization a little bit. So I'll have to have a quick faff onto there. Give it a second. There we go. That'll do for the example. Is that safe? Well, it's in space, isn't it? Right? So that's all good. But I just don't feel it's as ideal as it could be because it's introducing extra links into the safety chain. You've got the sling in this case, or the dog bone, that's extra, doesn't need to be there. This snap gate doesn't need to be there because we could just go straight into that one, couldn't we? And put it into there. And then I've saved a couple of links. It also means that my mate, if we're on a multi-pitch, can now take these bits of kit because they might be useful to them. They chuck them over their head and off they go and maybe that's good for slinging over a spike or something on the route. So obviously I need to change the equalisation again for that little adjustment. Quick enough to do. There we go. But that seems a better option to me. So I don't like to see it personally because I just don't think it's the best way of doing things in this case. I wouldn't teach it myself. Some people do, but I wouldn't teach it myself. All right. So there we go, that's my opinion on using uh, snap gates on belays. As I said right at the beginning, is it okay to use snap gates on belays? Absolutely it is. You've just got to make some solid decisions that come from climbing loads of routes and getting out there and thinking about these things. In a work sense with beginners, learn to lead courses, things like that, I just teach to use screw gates by default because it doesn't matter about carrying a couple of extra screw gates when you're first starting out on nice steady climbs, right, and just getting loads of experience. As you progress, you can start to make those decisions. So if someone came to me on a, an improver course where they're looking to push on the grades or something, maybe that's something they can think about and I'd introduce it at that stage. For you guys watching this video, hey, it's up to you to make the decisions, isn't it? Just think about, is it appropriate and safe to use a snap gate in that particular spot? Would a screw gate be better? Would opposed snap gates be better? Or back to back, that's another option. I just prefer the opposed one. So there's just a few extra things to think about, isn't there, right? I'm not gonna start carrying extra screw gates. I'm happy with the decision making that has come from years of climbing experience and lots of mileage and everything, all right? Please do fire away with any questions. You know the score on that one. I'm always happy to answer as best I can. And thank you to the person whose name I, uh, I've forgotten who asked the question about snap gates. I do apologise. They contacted me on Facebook. Do find us on Facebook. It's a good link into there, wasn't it? Uh, follow us on there. Different things get posted. Find us on Insta and follow us on there as well. Click that like button. Smash the subscribe button. It's massively appreciated. It is such a good thing uh, for me to help me get found and stuff and, and spread the word and everything. Um, thanks very much for watching. As I said, I'm, I'm always super grateful for that. Thanks very much for watching again. More videos coming up very soon.